some polynomial results. Okay. So our first one simply says this. If you've got a polynomial and it's k distinct, so different, real zeros, a1, a2, a3, up to ak, then you know whatever x minus a1 times x minus a2 times x minus a3 up to x minus ak is a factor. Because logically, if you were to solve polynomial x equals zero, you would get the solutions. x equals a1, x equals a2, and so on. Using that idea. So we're going to show that 1 and negative 2 are zeros, and then we're going to factorise. <laughs> this is really very similar to what we did yesterday. So polynomial 1, yes, that equals zero. Polynomial negative 2, that equals zero. So because they're both zeros, we know x minus 1, x plus 2, is a factor. So let's factorise. But instead of writing x minus 1, x plus 2, I'll write the quadratic there, because then that's easier to logically work out what's going to go in the second one, because I can use our, our leading term times leading term idea. So in this case, x squared times something is x to the power of 4. Well, that's going to be x squared. Negative 2 times something is going to be negative 10. So that's 5. So I can either use... Well, actually, I've got three choices, haven't I? I could use the x's, the x squareds, or even the x cubes. So many choices. So if we go with the x cubes... Well, at this stage, we haven't got... Yeah, we've got 1x cubed. Well, no, we... we Oh, yeah, well, one x cubed is all we want. Yeah, so we shouldn't have anything else. So you think there's nothing in the middle? Yeah. Well, let's yeah. just double check. Well, let's have a look at the x squareds then. Oh, what do we got? Yeah, well, yeah. We got 5 minus so yeah. Okay. So there's our factorization. Now, the x squared plus 5, of course, doesn't factorize. So we just leave that as a quadratic. Whilst we're using real numbers anyway. We'll get to the excitement of the other types later. So expanding on that idea. If it's of degree n, and we know n of the zeros, then we must actually have the complete factorization. Because you can't have more than n solutions to a polynomial of degree n. A linear function has one solution. A quadratic has a maximum of two solutions, and so on and so on. So if we know the uh, degree of our polynomial is n, and we have n solutions, we got them all. So we've got the complete factorization, x minus a1, x minus a2, and so on. Of course, that's if it's monic. If it's not monic, there might be a constant out the front or something like that. And so that leads on to this idea, uh, which pretty much is the same as the last one. You can't have more than n solutions. We have a double zero at negative 7, a single zero at 2, Write down a possible polynomial. Now, when it says a possible polynomial, we're sort of going to generalise, so we cover every possible polynomial. So we know it has a factor of x minus 2. We know it has a factor x plus 7 squared. Now, to generalise it, I'll say, well, OK, I'm going to multiply it by some other polynomial, but that polynomial can't have solutions 2 or negative 7. Because if it had a solution of 2, then I'd no longer have a single 0 at 2, I'd, I'd have a double 0. And similarly with a negative 7, if I had a solution of negative 7, it would no longer be a double, turn into a triple. Also, could be times some constant. Yeah. So I'll just put k out the front there, where k is some real number. How about we go for a monic polynomial of degree 3? So again, we know x minus 2, x plus 7 squared... But that's it, because that is already of degree 3, so it can't be times another polynomial. And monic, so it can't be times a, a constant out the front. So in this case, there is only one possibility for that one. If it's a monic of degree 4, OK, well, again, at this stage it's 3, so to make it degree 4, I'd have to multiply by a, a linear factor. So I'll multiply by x minus a, where a can't be 2 or negative 7. But again, it might not be... Oh, no, they did say monic, so I don't need to multiply by a constant. A polynomial of degree 5. All right, so there's the two factors we know. Now, what would you multiply by? Yeah, it's, it's going to be a quadratic. 
So I'm just going to call it QX rather than writing out a general quadratic. Uh, it's a degree two. Again, does not have solutions two or negative seven. Uh, in this case, I'd also multiply by K out of the front. I suppose it's debatable whether I really need to put K out the front because when I do say times a polynomial, that polynomial might not be monic anyway. So. Um, don't make the mistake with this one of going, oh, well, I'll multiply it by X minus A, X minus B, something like that, because that would assume the quadratic can be factorised. And it might be times a quadratic that can't be factorised. All right, the fourth idea. Polynomial of degree N, so this is where I contradict the third thing. The third thing, you remember, said you can't have more than n. So if it does have more than n, then it is the zero polynomial. So, and the zero polynomial is just a very strange polynomial. It's that, that number against zero. Because the question is, how many solutions are there to uh, the zero polynomial equals zero? Yeah, there's an infinite number. Because there's no way to substitute the x in anyway. So zero will always equal zero. But then the other interesting question, which someone did bring up yesterday, was what is the order of the zero polynomial? What degree is it? It's under Well, you can't, you can't, because, I mean, the most common answer, I guess, is people say, oh, well, the zero polynomial must be a degree zero. But that would imply it's a constant number. Is zero a constant number? I mean, all zero is, is this symbol we use to represent a lack of value. There's always this argument about, well, is zero actually a number anyway? And it, it, some people still debate about that one. Okay. Oh, exercise, jolly good fellow. Outstanding.